scroll back. Oh, wait, there's no Ross tonight, so I can't yell at anybody. Damn. So this is waiting. There it is. Privacy, public. Let's get this going. Two shows this week. Usually I just do one a week. Been doing some uh, time management this fall. It's been a downfall, it really has. Compared to normal falls, this one's kind of been down in some ways. Not quite the energy we had back in the spring. Spring was intense. Fall still got a lot to go, though, especially this weekend. There's still a lot of stake. It's still Champions Month. We've crowned two, crowned two champions so far. Scorpions, Playmakers Elite. What's still left to come? This weekend, the Rhode Island Flag Bowl. But before we get to that, let's talk about last weekend and what went down in the Nine Man North. Let's go ahead find that real quick. Oh, a meeting is being live streamed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead, get this up. Um, where is that? It's been a bit. Sorry about that. Um, this has been like, it's been crazy. Like, because this weekend, nothing went down around here. We actually had rain just wipe out any sort of opportunity for anyone to have any sense of joy or happiness. So, like, instead, most of us sat at home and, you know, it wasn't too bad. In case you're wondering, yeah, I cannot find what happened to that that's really weird i had created a video earlier and then i walked away that was my mistake okay i see where it went to now okay that's weird that never has ever saved there thanks computer for that, i guess in case you're wondering enjoy the jerseys on display behind us while we're waiting um we got the tbt Yellow for Motion City with the blue, white that we wore in Atlantic City with the red, and of course the navy with the white that we wore way back, if you recall, when we were up in uh, New York, going back up north, trying to this weekend. We're still on the fence about that. Um, there's a lot of things that need to happen on my end before I get to that point. So as soon as I know what's going on on my end, I will proceed to go with the other end of it. And as soon as I figure out why this saved in all places, buried in some folder, I don't even know. This is so weird. Can I just do it like this? Yeah, I don't even know. Anyways, Rhode Island flag ball this weekend. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to simplify this for myself real quick. I was trying to trace the folder that entire time. For some reason, it shared somewhere where I never even accessed that stuff. There we go, finally. Gee, that took me like 20 minutes to figure out why it was there, where it was there. Weekend review. Let's start it out with the GCFFA real quick. What's up, Ricky John Francois? How you doing tonight? Shout out Category 5, South Florida Flag Football Association. They're going to be playing at Nationals. Hope to have more on Nationals um, when we talk to Jamie Wolf a little later on. But first, let's look at GCFFA. These are the results we have so far for Friday night. Punisher 6, take over nothing in that game. Um, that was a nice little defensive battle between both of those teams. Great way to kick off the weekend in nine, man. Back and forth battle. Um, Eric's page was live for it. Really great game all around. Takeover. A pretty impressive night for them. They went on to beat Empire by one point. We don't have an official result there. These are somewhat incomplete, um, to say the least. We do not have 
the full results for GCFFA at the moment. If anybody has it, let me know. Um, right now, I'm just going with what we got for the moment, which was this. So if anybody has an update, just send me up. Um, this is what I know about the standings. 22-21, Tapia. All right, awesome, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome. Ah, damn, that's that, that game sounds great too. What a Friday night up there. That sounds fun. Missed two point conversion. Oh, that's always the worst way to lose. That's the worst way to lose. Uh, that's got to hurt for Empire. But they're going to get a chance in playoffs. It's going to be interesting. This is what we got for GCF face Andy. This is based on what Eric was saying. Records might be complete, they might be incomplete. Like I said, this is the data I have coming into. Today, I don't have the full data for this yet. We might even do a re-recap tomorrow night, so to speak, of GCF, a favorite updated one. Here's what I know, though, based on what was told last night. Punishers are the one seed currently. Panthers, two. Misfits, three. Reapers, four. Changang, five. Empire, six. Bulldogs, seven. Scorpions, eight. Takeover, nine. 56ers, 10th. And Dragons down to 11th now with the forfeits. Um... New York Rebels have dropped out for the remainder of the season as well as playoffs. However, they're not done with nine man for this year. They will be at the Rhode Island Flag Bowl. Playoffs announced to be December 5th, 4 p.m. will be the championship that day. We're going to make an effort to get up there ourselves uh, for that one. GCFFA playoffs, December 5th. Still got about a month to go before we get there. A lot of champions to be crowned over the course of this next month ahead. So far, we got two. We'll talk about the third one who came in, the third champion, I should say. Rhode Island flag football B playoffs. Started out the battle of the win list. Rhode Island Spartans Rebellion. This was actually uh, canceled due to weather weeks ago. They were supposed to play each other. However, weather prevented that. We did get the game finally on Sunday, the 4 or 5 matchup. Spartans coming away with the dub. I don't got any final scores yet. Didn't see anything posted on the Rhode Island page. Like I said, this is kind of just based on what I've seen so far. Uh, Rhode Island Spartans over Rebellion. Troy City Titans over Steel. Uh, Spartans then beat straight forward. Got a big upset on the one seed. And then they knock out the two seed, Troy City Titans. So the Rhode Island Spartans take three out of the four games that day. They are your B division champion after starting out with a record of 0-7-2 and coming into playoffs. They were the four seed, the very bottom barrel of this B division. A lot of people felt like the Rebellion Spartans game winner was just doing the straightforward. Not the case here. Rhode Island Spartans stepping up in a big way. Hey, glad to see a Spartans team finally come out on top in the playoff scenario. Um, standings will be for RIFF. This is where they're sitting at. Right now, as you notice, the 7th through 11. The B division was 7th place through 11th place. Hey, Warren, how you doing, bud? Um, this is what we got for that. Rhode Island Spartans, three, seven, and two. They're currently a seventh. Um, Troy City Titans, they are currently three, six, and two. Straightforward, four, five, and one. Steel, one, eight, and one. And Rebellion, oh, nine, and one. Oddly enough, out of these teams, only Steel and Rebellion will be playing this weekend in the Rhode Island Flag Bowl. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Spartans not there. Titans not there. Straightforward not there. But still Rebellion will be there. Let's see if either squad can come away with a few more wins and what's been a tough year for both sides so far. But congratulations to the Rhode Island Spartans. They are your Rhode Island flag football champions. Um, mergers? Okay, so that's what's happening there. Okay. That's what I wanted to make sure of. I didn't see their team name listed, so I had a feeling, though, they'd probably be mixing it up a little bit. I always like seeing teams come together for tournaments. If you don't got enough, you might as well jump in, especially if you want to get out there and play. You never get many chances, especially after this tournament, especially up there. It's going to get very cold, not a lot of chances till nationals. And then after that, you're talking spring. So get all the opportunities, go to reps while you can, get all the chances to play. We're really excited about it. Here is the Rhode Island Flag Bowl schedule for this weekend. Three fields overall. Games will be running from about 8 o'clock until right about 6.15 estimate is the early estimate on that, roughly. Um, 
on at least two of those fields. Field three be shutting down around five o'clock. Take a look at the matchups. Eight o'clock, you got Wild Savages and Storm. I believe that's the Savages from the Rhode Island League. Don't have much information on Storm, um, but we can get some information. There was a change on field one with rollers dropping. Okay, Jamie. I'm about to give you the link. Let me get you on here real quick. Let me try to get you the link. Now that I see you're watching, there we go. Give it a second. Get that on there. Perfect. So that's the schedule so far. So rollers are out of there. So that means looking at the game schedule that we will not have the chain gang rollers nor 148 outlaw rollers game. So rollers out, we had mentioned they had not played in a tournament since Charm City. And so with that, I guess we will not see them again until nationals. Hate to see a late dropout. Um, especially when it, in the tournament like this. But we're always glad to see this man come on the air. Always glad to see him at a tournament. Welcome to the show once again, Mr. Jamie Wolf. What's going on, my friend? Nothing much, sir. It's a nice little beautiful cold November night here in the DMV. How's it up there in Rhode Island? Uh, it was 60 yesterday. It's 60 be about yesterday. 55. It'll be about 55 this weekend, they're saying. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. Last, last year it was 72 on this day, but that's global warming, I guess. <laughs> I'm trust me, in recent years, I've seen like 70 down here at Christmas Eve. Like the weather's been crazy for the longest time. I don't know what it is. No, no, it's been, but uh, I was looking for a great weekend this weekend, so excited for it. I am too. I am too. This is going to be really great. Um, so you mentioned the in the comments about the dropout of mm -hmm. rollers. So yeah. what has changed? What's different about it now? Anything new that we should know about coming in with this drop? Yeah, let me uh, just get my notes in front of me here for a minute. Uh, hold on. Where is it? Bear with me one sec. So with the, with the rollers dropping out, um, you have the three games first, like you talked about. The uh, Savages, Storm, Savages, Riot, Storm, Riot. Then we're going to have a break, and then Chain Gang's playing the Outlaws. Then Chain Gang is playing their Lions. Then Outlaws are playing Punishers, and then Punishers are playing Lions. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's what it is. So we'll be looking at, and that's still going to be, an, that's still going to be four teams in that A bracket? Uh, yeah, four teams in the A bracket. Okay, okay. Just making sure yeah. for clarification. Yep, no, and then we took a break after the 1030. We took a break and starting up at one. Okay, so it's going to be a split between uh, the B games ending and the A games starting. On that field, yeah. So uh, I actually okay. updated the picture on my uh, announcement I put up there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, but on Sunday we'll be running four fields. Four fields on Sunday? Yeah, we have four fields at the complex. Just uh, didn't need them all for uh, – Saturday. Okay. Okay. Yep. So with that being said, we're looking at probably 8 a.m. start Sunday morning and a finishing yeah. time about. I'll tell you that. I can, I can, you can get the exclusive. Hold on one sec. All right. Look at this. Hold on. Let me find it for us. Only live here on Blunt Talk. <laughs> uh, Kent. Uh, I sent it over to Kent before. Where is it? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So on Sunday, uh, we're going to be doing, um, as I said, four fields. We'll have two fields starting at 8 a.m. And then we'll have uh, B games will be starting. So we'll go start with two, then go to all four fields. The B chip and A chip are set for 215. 215? 215. Nice and easy. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's early. Yep, and we do have lights at the complex too, just in case we, God forbid, needed them. Is this the same complex from last flag bowl? It is, and that's the first year we had it. We were at the other one for years. So, okay. 
Th this one is different as four fields lighted uh, if needed. And I'll show you, I just shared with you the Sunday schedule and set up too. There you go. So you can see those now. So that's the field setup. All right, let me try to get back on there real quick. Be about 55, be about 55 this weekend. Or so. Okay, let me try to get back on there real quick. Sorry about that, Jamie. I flip back no, to start playing audio. Perfect. Yep. So that's what we're looking like. Get it back up. All right, so this is what we got for the fields. I'm going to share the Chrome screen real quick. Get that set up. A little lackadaisical today. I apologize, everybody. Perfect. So this is the updated schedule and uh, the Sunday schedule laid out right in front of us as well. Oh, I don't see it on my screen. It says you started sharing, maybe on my computer. Hold on. My computer just started resetting itself or flickering. There you go. There it is. There we go. We yep. good. All right, cool. Yep. Oh, is it still showing your end? Yeah, I see it fine. Okay, okay, good. My end mm -hmm. just keeps flickering back and forth. I don't know what it is. My computer gets like that sometimes. No, it's clear. All right, perfect, perfect. So you see the schedule out there laid out, um, Sunday schedule as well. So I any, cut it off a little on my picture, but you get the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, as mentioned, four fields for this tournament on Sunday, three for Saturday. Try to pull up a map of the fields in a minute. Sorry about that. Facebook is like not taking the screen share very well at all for some reason. Yeesh. It up and I guess it was a field there setup. This is a good setup. That's a really good setup. Yeah, so parking lot right in the middle on the top between one and three. Uh, there'll be, uh, you know, bathroom shit like that. And then I'm going to have some food trucks there also. So, um, one thing in a, in a, it's 80 Bend Street. When you come in, you come in where that entrance is, you'll see a baseball diamond and you just drive around the back there. Uh, but it's 80 Bend Street, Warwick. And I'll probably put something up on the sign there. So we'll see it. But a lot of people were there uh, two years ago. So hopefully they remember. But it's been a, it's been a long two years since the last uh, Rhode Island flag bowl. Yes. Memories of the 2019 game. Or event, I should say. God, isn't um? I mean, the last one didn't Costa get punched in the face? I think he got a black eye during that one. Who got one? I, I think, think it Jeff Costa. I he, think. Yeah, not elbows, I that. wasn't they playing? It was the Blazers, I believe. Uh, Blazers. You know Lions. what? In the championship game, right? Yeah. Okay, I now that, I remember the, the more you talk about it, the more it's coming back to me. So I think that's on the video. Yeah, and I think Omar got hurt too, if I remember. He got hit in the head or something. He banged heads with someone. And then um, in B, uh, the Outlaws won. First time ever that both Rhode Island teams won, which was great. It's been a while. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Yeah. So this tournament's been going on a while. When was the first yeah. one? 2006. 2006? 2006. We did, uh, it was at a state park. We had probably eight teams, maybe. And then it, it built from there. Uh, then we did it on an air base down in, in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. And then we did, uh, then we were in Cranston for years, which is a great facility, but then we outgrew it. So that's when I found this one. Hold on, just having issues with my computer. I'm about to say, like, usually this event draws very heavy when it comes to nine-man teams. It's one of the top tournaments up north every single year. This this year, I think, was a little different. I think there's a, the break from that. So nine-man, we require a lot of fields. Yeah. yeah. So where we're other where where that lends itself to being not as COVID-friendly during this time right now, because you talk about the vast amount of people. But if I go to you and you 
have a, uh, a field and I'm going to rent it from you. Oh, I need one field. And you can fit five on that for smaller styles, you know? So it doesn't come off. But if I come to that same person and say, I need, I need, you know, four fields and have the same amount of people, they're not going to give it to me because um, they're more inclined to do one field, which is more cost effective too for people running the events. So, but um, a lot of the teams, I think that are, are the top, uh, Sean, are getting a little older and, and people are, you know, more commitments. I, I think A has never been more wide open in years. Yes. The A I bracket think, this year is insane. is insane. I think there's teams that can move up right now and compete and be in that final four and B. Think about, I mean, there's not those people practically, I mean, so no more Seminoles or, I mean, second gen. There's not them. Uh, main event hasn't been together, but you know, they'll be strong. Punishers have been light in league play. Who knows what Florida is going to bring? Bulldogs had some time off, um, but you know, they always come strong. But these teams don't play together when a lot of the other areas they do. And, you know, it's, it's crazy to think like main event out since nationals has only logged a total of 10 nine man games. And that's it. Yep. That's usually about two tournaments worth if they're going to, and that's all they've been to really is two tournaments, AC yep. charm city. Yep. Yep. And both times they've gotten to the championship. So I think with main event, I feel like they're in a place where they really don't feel like they have to go out, but we'll see how that plays into Florida because chemistry is huge. Yeah, yeah. They don't like uh, – Elliot always tells me his guys don't like the cold weather up here. <laughs> it's, it's been, it's been batshit cold before. I mean, we'd have, we've had garbage cans on, on the sidelines, on fires in them. We set up a uh, – we had to wrap a carport in plastic and put uh, heaters in there to make like a sauna. But, no, it hasn't been that in a little bit now. So. November tournaments are just – you know, it seems like I've never been to one where the weather's been like fine. It's always some kind of like very cold and wet weather going on. Yeah. The, the last fields we used to be at in Cranston used to be on top of a hill and used to get some, it was 15 mile an hour winds every time, every game, no matter what, every year. So that's never fun. And then the last year we were there was 18. They had a probably two inches of rain fall the night, bef the night before the tournament. You walk down the field, it was swaying like this, back and forth. Craziest thing you've ever seen. Oh, that was wow. the last time we played there. So <laughs> we ruined those fields. Um, but uh, I, I actually bumped into the guy the other day. He goes, you outgrew us, Jamie. You knew it. I knew it. And we weren't going to shut you down with all your people traveling from all over the place. But I think we're done with the relationship, you know, which is fine. Then I found something else. Upgraded. Yeah. Yeah, but it'll be nice not to worry about it and get down to Florida um, and, and uh, get some warm weather. Looking forward to that. I just, I just came back inside before we started the Zoom call, and I can already feel it. I'm ready for that Florida weather right now. Yeah. Although it does get a little chilly down there in uh, Orlando sometimes. Yeah, but chilly for us and chilly for them are two different things. If it's 70 and you're from Florida, you're wearing sweaters. Oh you know, my God! If it's if it's if it's if it's, if it's fifty five shorts weather for us up north, but yeah, I, I still remember watching an old college game with Miami playing Wisconsin, and they were in Orlando where the temperature was about fifty nine, and all the <laughs> Miami players were gathered around the heaters. Yeah, yeah, they had no idea. <laughs> Speaking of college football, how about my Michigan State this weekend? That was a comeback, man. That was a phenomenal game. I was I was unfortunately engaged uh, during all of that with my Terrapins playing against oh, Indiana, we but I, caught, in but I caught the last seven minutes of the game. Yeah, my uh, so my daughter goes there, but she was outside the stadium. But they all stormed it at the end of the game. So I'm going out there in a couple of weeks. I'm going to catch a basketball game. So oh man, never been I hear, a football game. Yeah, East Lansing is always popping for bas especially when it comes to basketball and football. Like the Spartans are on fire right now. Oh, I'm crazy. very impressed by their start so far. Yeah. Oh, Ricky's more of a boss than minus two. Oh, you can have that weather. But I see on the chat, I have the other one here with the, what's it called? But 
it's been warm enough. But uh, yeah, for Michigan State, can't wait for that, but it's going to be cold. Uh, never been to a basketball game, did the football game against Indiana two years ago. So that was in uh, East Lansing? East Lansing, yes. How was the game day atmosphere there? It was crazy, literally walking through campus. Oh, come do shots with us, drinking everywhere. But they tailgate, not just in the parking lot, you could be in front of the English building, the science building, just all over campus, tailgating everywhere. They shut down the whole campus, and it's one of the biggest ones in the country. Um, land wise, I think 5,000 acres, something crazy. But we don't have to talk Michigan State, we could talk flag ball and, and football. I'm sorry, yeah, no, you all, all good, all good, yeah, and my Knicks too, even though they lost last night. But <laughs> and the Jets, you and beat the number Jets. one team in the AFC, and the Jets, I can't forget my Jets, all my green teams, <laughs> except for the, for the uh, Knicks, but. You all wore, we, did you all have a green jersey a couple years ago? Like on St. Patrick's did have Day a green, or something? Yeah, I think didn't Nate Robinson use using a slam dunk contest? Yeah, and I remember the backlash because of all the Knicks fans thinking about the Celtics colors when the green came up. Oh yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> it was a good weekend for my Jets. Yeah, I was I was happy for you guys to get the dub against Cincinnati. Yep. Yep. So but uh, this weekend, we're excited for. Do you want to know anything on some of the teams? I could, I can go through them. I know who a lot of them are. Yeah, let me uh, ask about a couple of them that's got my yeah. attention. Yeah. So I believe the Wild Savages are the same one that plays in the local league up there. Yep, that's Wild Card and Savages who've been playing separately for a while, but they're coming together for this event. So, oh, uh, okay. Yep. So there's Wild Card and the Savages putting the team together, which should be good. I like that. Uh, I like that. I, I always say it seems like if you don't got enough and you at least know somebody in your league who mm-hmm. doesn't also have enough and you just have enough to work together, make it work. Yep. Like this is the right time for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's the key to all this. If you don't have local teams at an event, it's it's not a good draw. So I think we have eight local teams, eight, you know, in mass in Rhode Island, which is great. I'm excited for that. That's gonna be great. Yeah. Um Storm, where are they? I think I've seen them before somewhere. So Storm is from Albany area. Um, don't Albany know area? them. Albany area, upstate New York. Okay. Um, if if I'm saying if it's not Albany, I apologize in advance. Those guys up there are crazy. Um, but <laughs> I I did see an interesting name come up on their roster today. I haven't posted it yet. So oh. I saw a certain, I saw an A player um, on their roster. Interesting. Uh, so maybe that will come out in the morning when I post them. You or never know who's them. gonna pop up. Yep, and I like it. The transparency is there. It's great. You know. Would that be the same case at nationals? Rosters posted and everything. Yep, we did it last last two years. Easier. I like it. I like it a yeah. lot. Yep. Let's try to see what kind of team you got, Ricky. I see you in the comments. Yeah. Um, Arkham. Arkham, I don't know them well. They're from up in the Boston League. Uh, so I assume uh, with one team coming from Boston that they're going to have people from multiple multiple teams. So to say accurately, I know what Brian Perry's bringing would be something I, I couldn't say. You know, but uh, they are driving down from that league. That Valley League, United Valley League. So um yeah, glad to see them support. Yeah, they're, they're crazy up there. That's, a, that's what I hear. Yeah. No. I used to play with a lot of guys up there years ago when, when I won national. I have to check it out sometime when I'm up yeah. in the area. Yeah. Um, let's see, teams that I don't know very well. Looking around. Some of these are recognized. Rick Squad actually did really well when they came down to Ocean City back in April. They traveled really well for a team coming yep. from Rhode Island to play at OC. Them and yep. the Lions performed very well down here, actually, when they both yep. represented the state. They have one of the top, top beat players, I think, in the country. Yeah. Wide receiver. I'm looking forward to seeing them again. I have not had a chance to catch them since OC. So if I get a, if I get up there this weekend, which I'm mm. working towards it, we'll see. I'll get back hey. to you. There you go. You, enough people coming. There's people coming down from your way. 
Oh, I know, but the problem is like it's different time frames. I don't know when I gotta leave. I gotta get uh, stuff done beforehand. Yeah. But yeah, I got a lot of deadlines this week. There you go. I hear you. Yeah. I'm trying to find employees. I can't find employees right now. You you hiring? Where, 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 I'm hiring. Where you, you know any salespeople in Boston? I'm hiring. Okay, Boston's a little drive for me. I'll never mind. Yeah. Looking for four guys. I got three or four. If you're watching this show and you're in the Boston, Massachusetts area, hit up Jamie Wolf today. Yeah. He's got you if you're looking to do some sales. Yep. There you go. So, so I don't know much about Arkham. Yeah, they're kind of a mystery to me, too. I love these nor northern teams coming up. We usually talk about, like, Rhode Island yep. as the northernmost point of nine, man, usually. But beyond that, there are different leagues up there. It's just you mm -hmm. don't really hear about teams up there in the circuit much because they don't have – many local tournaments that get the mm -hmm. same attention that say a Rhode Island gets or say an AC or even down here with Charm City or Ocean City. Yeah. Um, one team I'm excited about coming, St. Louis. Yes, I really love that. Coming. That's great them coming. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, like that's that. definitely good. Yeah, I love that too. Um, yeah. Couple of my guys will be on there. Looking forward to seeing them with the, with Show Me Football. Awesome, that's great. I mean, that's what it's about. Skinny doing his thing. Love seeing him. Preston too. So, and then uh, I'm trying to look at the other teams. So the Browns have a lot of the Spartans from Rhode Island. Okay. So, so backstory: the Spartans pig, um, who runs the Rhode Island League with Chris Fine, he is originally from Hartford area. So he played with the Browns when they were the Steelers for years. And then he moved here. So there's that natural, you know, relationship with him and Unc and those guys and, and playing together for these tournaments. So they've okay. done that for a couple of years now. I like that. I like that. And especially yeah. being able to pull from the local area as well. And we yeah. saw the Spartans actually uh, Sunday. They won the B championship down in their Rhode Island flag football league. Yep. Yep. And then who else? Um, you know, Apex Dragons, they, they're going to be strong. Uh, Rebellion, they're local. They merge with um, Titans. The oh, okay. Titans, so the so Troy Titans, Titans. Titans. Okay. Is, I, I believe so, where they were talking about, because uh, Titans is AC. Anthony Comer, uh, Beast Mode, so quarterback. So okay. I think he's with them, or they were talking about it, I know. If I'm wrong, I apologize in advance. Um, so, you know, Long Island will be tough between, you know, the Ducks, the Demons, the Reapers. They'll all be tough, which will be good. I want to give a shout out to Maryland Venom, the sole Maryland team making the trip up there this yeah. weekend. Yep. Yep. I was talking with Robbie today. So. I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, this, yep. is, this is a good overall lineup. And I like the mix, Rhode Island teams. You got mm -hmm. some of the known northern teams, a couple wild cards coming up north from outside the region and Venom and Show Me Football. Um, that adds a lot to a tournament, in my opinion. Yep. When you got yeah. a diverse amount of competition from different areas, different leagues, and in most cases, and the biggest trend lately is teams from other styles crossing over to nine man mm -hmm. and just adding pieces to get those nine guys on the field. Yep. No. No, I'm excited for it. Definitely wish we had some more A-teams, but um, I'm excited about what we have. It allows me to concentrate more on the B-side B where I traditionally don't get that shot. So I always know some of the teams, but this allows me to get around more and not be pulled in different directions with the A guys, which will be good. And Kent will be up here. It'll be good to see Kent and Bonnie and Zarek will be up here. So, and then, um, I don't know. And then, obviously, my, our buddy Sev will be there in, in, in spirit. They're actually doing a memorial service for him. I saw that um, November 15th in Connecticut. I'll post okay. some details on it. So, it's going to be the one year coming up. Damn. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Time is um, flowing, man. That's in West Haven. Mm. West Haven, Connecticut, on one o'clock on the fifteenth. I'll I'll point. I'll post some info on it. But so, but um, I don't know. 
any other questions you have for me about nationals, this, anything I got a little more time. So let's start out with uh, the tournament itself. Uh, food vendors. There's going to be a lot of people wondering about the food status. Florida or Rhode Island? Oh, Rhode Island. We're going to. Oh, yeah. We'll have food trucks. I'll get the last one. Uh, I'll get the name of it tomorrow, I think, from them. So we go through this guy who runs all these food trucks around the state. So we'll have it there. Um, it'll be good. I mean, I do my schedule so you don't have to hang around that long. So, I mean, you're you're out of there definitely in three games or possibly two time slots on Saturday. So, but hopefully our guys like to hang out um, and stay around. So there'll be a lot of stuff happening there with the outlaws that this is like their homecoming for them uh, being from this area and, and just being at this tournament for years, which is great. Uh, but we will have food truck there and i um, excited for that. I'm excited for it as well. That's I always like when you're able to bring out the local vendors to these kind of tournaments because of the fact that it gives them that exposure to an outside audience from different parts of the country and allows them as well to uh, be able to get that sort of exposure mm-hmm. and grow their business as well. It's always great to see the community come together for stuff like this. And I know for the area in Rhode Island, uh, Warwick, correct? Is where the event's at? Yeah, it's Warwick. It's uh, five miles from the airport, right in Warwick. Oh, okay. That's, that's really convenient then. Very, yeah. very close. And Amtrak's there at the airport too. I think it stops there. So people want to jump on trains. I'm, te- I'm debating it, actually. I'm debating <laughs> There you go. But, um, no, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun event. This has always been Rhode Island's homecoming. This is when all football gets together. They're cheering for each other. Um, our leagues used to be 25 teams strong in Rhode Island. Wow. Uh, with two divisions. And then uh, it's uh, really uh, – the problem with us is the older teams or the more established ones, when they break up those – great younger players don't continue it a lot of time the tradition they go to other teams and so the teams start paring down but pig and chris have done a great job i wish we were on turf and we had the league but um it's just great seeing that every day every every sunday i've been able to catch a couple of their stuff online they'll say they're doing an excellent job up there like i'm really happy to see uh league play resume up north in rhode island um after I believe it was two years. I don't think you guys played last year at all. They didn't all. play last year, I don't think. I went down a couple of weeks ago down to the field. Saw them out there. But it's funny. Most of the guys, I mean, it's the Lions guys I know. Um, I know the Outlaws. There's some of the others. But it's great seeing them out there. I've been – like some of the guys who played, like their fathers I played with playing out there. Like uh, Aaron. You know Aaron? Plays for the Lions. Lyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His uh, his dad was uh, my quarterback, Donnie. Awesome. Donnie still plays. Donnie, I think quarterbacks one of the teams in Rhode Island now. See, that's what yeah. that's what makes the local leagues and other things like that the heritage of flag football, which is kind of the yeah. theme I'm going with tonight. Is like heritage. This was my dad's final jersey when he played yeah. nine man before yeah. he retired. Yeah, um, and that's why that people wore jerseys. I mean, look at that. That's a jersey. Straight up, yeah. Yep, yep. I had loads of jerseys. The Colts jersey and everything with the stripes and all that. As a pro knit to it and everything. Yeah. Now, that's what you used to buy. Now you get all this stuff built for the skinny assholes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just handed handed my guys this stuff and said, here you go. Yeah. Lane Haynes t-shirts. Yep, yep. But, um, so that's that's, uh, Rhode Island. I mean, just building on this tradition. Had a year off with it, but uh, keeping it going. So. I'm glad to see it continue going. And I'm, this tournament this weekend is going to be sick. This is going to be off the hook. I'm really excited about it. Um, nine men returning to Rhode Island this fall after a long layoff. And it has come back in a huge way between what's going on in Rhode Island flag football and what will be going down this weekend in the Rhode Island flag bowl. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a good time. It's love, I love seeing everyone back uh, back on the field. You know, who won it? Uh, with the PME up north, Scorpion. With the Scorpions won all of them? Yes. Uh, Scorpions yeah. beat Misfits and LMFFL. PME yeah. beat Rideout and Maffle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, we still got yeah. one more champion in the crown down here, and that's about it. Uh, yeah. I saw the Misfits a couple of weeks ago. I went down when they played last in uh, Rhode Island. I saw Scorpions too. It was good to see. See, I'm, to see. I'm glad to see a lot of different teams like doing this, being able to travel across the nine man world, so to speak, and playing in different places. Like I talked about it with Scorpions. Them and Misfits have played on so many different fields this year, same for them in Rampage. They've been all over the place across different leagues, playing different states. I like the it. fact that them and Misfits went up there this year to New York. I think that's yep. I think that's huge for both franchises going forward. No, that's great. Love those guys. I gotta find it. The Scorpions came up to Rhode Island like in 08. Oh and, wow. uh, years and years ago. And I gotta find the picture. They did well and they didn't win the tournament. But um I remember we did a group team picture of my team and their team. But it's some of the old guys, it's funny. I gotta find the picture. It's somewhere. But, oh, kids can now get Pfizer vaccine, I guess. They just announced. Oh, breaking yeah. news here on One Talk. Breaking, breaking news. My buddy just texted me. So <laughs> I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk vaccinations or any of that stuff. Not why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, on my, right after this, though, I got started. I haven't really made the big push for Florida. I haven't really had time. Uh, I've been so busy, but... Uh, after this week, we'll get everyone locked and loaded for Florida so we can see what that looks like real quick um, and what those teams will look like. Great thing is we have a bunch of new teams moving up to A, which is exciting, you know? Yeah, A last year had about 11, um, which a lot of that was COVID-related most for sure because of just yep. lack of numbers and traveling. I think this year we're going to see – a bit more. How is the numbers looking so far for each bracket? If you were to give me, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to find it right now and pull that up. Okay. Yeah, let me find the link. Uh -uh. Where did I put it? Bear with me one second. Now. All good. All good. I got it all night. Here's the link now. I understand. Um, that flyer of the teams. Trust me, I took about five minutes trying to find the uh, PowerPoint earlier. Oh, God. Yeah, I know the teams are on here somewhere. Oh, team was. So for right now, just signed up in, in uh, the A division is Scorpions, Category 5, Dream, Main Event, Wolfpack, Misfits. Um, Lions will be there. Punishers will be there. Um, dogs will be there. Uh, we'll also have, um, well, so I'll probably takeover will be there. Um, and then there's some more from up north, your end, that will probably be there in A. Uh, for the division two, we got 717 Elite, Baez, Blackhawks, Browns, Empire, Ducks, Titans, Rampage, Show Me. Pack, Spartans, Wildcats. Right now, we have no, uh, we'll get a lot more there. We'll get the islands. We'll get the Caymans, the two Bahama teams. Um, this year, again, coming back, we'll get uh, teams out of Rhode Island, a couple out there. There's still a lot to go there. I figure we'll be around, we'll get another one out of Miami. I figure we'll be around 30, I bet you'll be around 45 total. I believe that's a record. Yeah, that's close. That's close to it. I think uh, 44 was once. I, I thought we'd break 50. We'll see what else. I haven't really made the push yet. So, um, and, and not even push. It's more just reminding people now. I mean, everyone knows me, you know, so it's not like coming out of the blue with someone trying to recruit them. I pretty much know who will go and who won't. So, you'll get a couple out of New York, too. Um, Long Island and Westchester. There. That's going to be awesome. So, yeah. And Chain Gang. Hopefully, Chain Gang does well this weekend. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be making their yeah. circuit debut. Do stuff, hyping them up in the comments. Yeah. Someone said that he's going to hire um, uh, Rugs when he gets off of um, bail out of jail. Someone wrote that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, Jersey guys coming North Face. You guys, come on. Jersey's going to be just as cold. This will be good. 55 degrees. Be perfect. Sunny. Nice weekend. So This is it's football weather, man. This, it's is, football this weather. is the time you got to live for. Yep, definitely. Definitely, definitely. So, but um, the one thing with Nationals, just jumping around, um, I think everyone knows by now we're located still at Northeast Regional Park um, in Davenport. Even though when you go to that main link, it shows that Simmers Young Complex. We're not there. We're the same spot we've always been. Yes. Which I think is one of the best spots around. That that facility is yeah. top of the line as you can get. Like, yeah. You especially with cool. the way they take care of that turf. You know, when I was going there last year, Mm -hmm. I visited on Thursday and they did something I don't usually see at events. Like yeah. uh, the lines were repainted and everything. The field looks fresh. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, what's his name? Aaron does a great job down there. Ashton does a great job. We used him out down there for the AFFL event. Uh, I ran the event down there too at their park for them, which is good. Yeah, uh, like yeah, the Davenport's the best like and the houses are right there i was just down there a couple couple weeks ago down at disney but just the houses there so cheap to travel there um but uh it'll be a great event in florida like it always is for nine man and excited for, for what it, what it shows and then you know what the good thing is with the ffwct the week later teams have another chance to play those other events so there's nothing holding anyone back which is good yeah, and yeah. I like that a lot about uh, yep. what, what they're doing with national with nationals right now is that they're doing the next weekend. I think was a good move on their end. Um, I think that allowed more flexibility in traveling and making it. There were people I was hearing about who did play in Panama on Thursday and then were Orlando by Friday. Yeah, which was crazy for me to think about, especially with the logistics of that travel alone. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I give the FFWCT credit because I never. I never thought off MLK weekend would, would be beneficial. I thought it was so ingrained there, but as you know, players get younger and change people's needs change, you know, they don't need that extra MLK day for, uh, to travel or some odd, you know, where they did before, maybe, I don't know. Well, the best thing has to think about, like not all jobs necessarily have offered that holiday. Um, yeah. It's like mostly, I believe it's mostly government jobs or like some businesses. Yeah. The, the one and, thing that's a problem is a lot of uh, people who work for municipalities. I think if there's a holiday Monday, you're not allowed to take the Friday. So and there's I, a, the, yeah. I think there's some rule about that. Um, uh, Seb used to tell me that. Yes, go Knicks. Um, but definitely, uh, I think that's why Friday was so critical. Um, getting that time off when they didn't have, when they can get the time off or something like that. Or you couldn't take the day after a holiday or something. There's something around the holiday that made the Thursday the issue. Yeah, but, I remember the Thursday, Friday, and just yeah. thinking that was kind of going to be a little off. But it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, there's no perfect way of doing it no matter what, because everybody's occupation is so different. Yep. Um, no matter what, like I've had guys the last few years who told me they want to go so bad, but their work can't let them have off at all for it. Yeah. No, it's something you've just got to experience. It's just uh, just seeing all that football all around all day, different styles. And, and we don't even have like when when we would go to other events, there was a lot more fanfare around it. We're kind of in our own cocoon, which works for us right now. But going to the other side, seeing the vendor, seeing all the, like, the women's events, every style, just don't have the complex big enough to do it, you know? So that's why it's spread out. Austin Tyndall used to have that opportunity. Um, and just, was, it's great, that atmosphere. Yeah, I, I unfortunately I had a chance to see Austin Tyndall, but I heard a lot of good things about it. I do believe, though, like, it's a shame that Nine Man has to be away. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, like we're getting a chance to play what is essentially our Super Bowl on the best possible fields. I think you'll find in that area in general, outside of going to like a Disney complex or something like yeah. that. And and for our guys that worked with, with this amount of people we have being close to the houses, 
was critical. When you, when you were at Austin Tyndall, you were 40 minutes from your house. I mean, even, from the field, your house is 40 minutes away. Yeah, even so further now, from, uh, what's it called? What was that? What was last year's facility for uh, the other stops? I don't even know. I think with Simmers Young, that was like 35, 40 minutes. So now yeah. you're having to leave two hours early before a game, you know, that ride after. Now you can go back and forth within 10 minutes to your house all day long, which is phenomenal. And it has, and it's cost effective for us to, you know, stay at those with our large groups. That's why, that's why people did not want to go to Panama City. It was going to cost them double the price. Um, they couldn't play on that Thursday, a lot of them. And, and it just, they weren't going to go. That's why, uh, that's why I was pivoted the other way a couple of years ago. That makes sense. Like, especially with the way travel is set up, like, Houses are down there already. It's very convenient for what everybody wants to do. Mm -hmm. You can't say no to that turf facility alone. It's just how yeah. nice those fields are. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a good facility. There are, I mean, some, it does great, but that was it. Austin Tindo was always just you're playing on grass. Yeah. And, and it was beat up. I mean, they were playing on Austin Tindo for years since the 90s, I believe, at that complex, that same MLK weekend. Oh wow, that far yeah. back. Yeah. So my, my first time down there was 2005. It was my first time at Nationals playing eight man ineligible. That was nine man nine B. Man there was B. no nine man yeah. B. It was eight man ineligible. You just graduated up to, with one more player. Yep. You graduated. If you want eight man ineligible, you moved up to nine man. Was there ever a seven man ineligible? I don't know. We never got, we never got into those styles. You know, it was all inel it was always ineligible. Um, but once you moved up, so 2005, first year, played with the team Alliance out of New Hampshire. So, uh, which they used to go a lot. They, they still play Alliance. So, yeah, they were at then, last Nationals, I believe. Yes. Yep. So Alliance was there. So they, I played with them in 05, Jimmy Wilson and his brother Tommy. And then the next year we merged with them, the Silverbacks. Um, and that's in 2006. We went up there, played. We won eight man ineligible. We won the national championship against the DeVillains, who was Coop's team, Reggie Greenwood's team. There's a lot of those DMV guys. They know who they are. And, th and then we moved up the next year to play nine man, and we finished third after moving up. So that was fun. Classic. I'm looking yeah. forward to it, man. That's going to be yeah. 14, 15, 16th of January. Yeah. Yep. I'm excited. Is correct. When is the yeah, deadline I'm... for registration for those who might be wondering? Um, probably end of November sometime. End of November. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll figure it out. We'll get everyone done in time. How is scheduling being done for it? So, so we'll do the same exact thing. We'll have the schedule done, and then we'll go in some type of order. Um, random pick, probably, because we're not using points. So uh, we will figure out who picks first, and you can knock people out. But that's still yet to be determined. Speaking of points, will we ever see a return to the point system? Would that be summer 2022? or? Um, I'm going to take a look at it um, from the tournaments from this year, because there wasn't that many. So yeah. I think it might be easier to do, but we'll find a good way to do it. And in a lot of it, what we do is we create with being everyone from so many geographies, it's creating certain spots in a pool for a certain geography. So like if I group it, okay, here's the New York teams, here's the DMV teams, here's the St. Louis teams, here's the outliers together you know the bahamas the caymans the alabama stuff like that yeah. those are together too so then i'll say in a in a 14 pool when it's your turn to pick you have an opportunity if you're from the dmv to pick one of the dmv spots you know so then i can guarantee as best as i can that there's no local matchups and that it is well spread out which I think has been one of the biggest things uh, to come out mm -hmm. of the last few years is being able to avoid those local matchups to the best of the ability for tournaments. 
Um, because, you know, I feel like for some teams, like it's always good to travel, but it's even better if you play teams you never get to see, because otherwise yeah. if you're playing the same guys you play at home, then you could have just played local yep. that week. Yep. No. And, and uh, I, uh, I was able to do it last year out of all the games, there was one matchup, one, one matchup that I had to do. I couldn't get around it. Um, and I think it was, I want to say FOE had to play the Titans. May have been the only one. And they were pseudo same area, you know? But, yeah, um, they they ended up uh, going, uh, the, FOE ended up going at the Maffle actually right after that game too. They were another yeah. fill that season. So technically local, but technically still like a league differential. Yeah. Like, Yeah, but they both had good nationals, if I can remember. Yeah, they both had a good yeah. run. The uh, Titans yeah. got to the Elite Eight, and I think FOE was out in the first round of uh, day three. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. but that they, was. Um, they made a jump to A, FOE did for uh, Charm City very recently. Oh, good. So they've been definitely trying to step it up uh, to that higher oh. level. Yep. So. Uh, um, trying to think, trying to think. Asking about more future tournaments. AC. More, AC. Um, Staying in gonna June? Be, it's going to be in June, the week before Father's Day. Okay, so first week of June again. No, I think it's second this year. Oh, Father's Day. Um, okay, Father's Day, so, the third week. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So I'll tell you uh, Father's Day. Hold on. Let me take a look. I'll tell you exactly when. I'll have that locked up in the hotels put together in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, hold on one sec. I'm looking. Got it. Hold on. When's Father's Day 2022? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was June 19th, so the week before June 19th. Okay, that's the 12th. All right, perfect. Yeah, so it's the 12th. is is going to be same exact complex we were at last year, which worked out well. So with AC being in June – now, mm -hmm. is there any likelihood of a March tournament at all popping up? In I, I am. I, I am looking at it. I definitely have options. Um, it's just finding the right one. I was talking with someone the other day about it, but I think without the COVID restrictions and the backlog of people wanting fields, um, there could be more opportunities. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like twenty twenty two, the opportunities would be a lot more plentiful. Um, yeah, especially if we get and further those, away from twenty twenty. Yeah, I mean, when they came back COVID, all those youth teams were backed up, you know, with requests. So they're not going to put an adult guys out there. No, That's definitely not. Yep. So, um, and I know Charm City will have theirs. Um, there'll be one in Albany. Math will do theirs. So um, definitely be some good stuff and maybe some new ones jump on the scene. So. Yeah, I'm really happy to like to see the growth of a lot of tournaments over the last few years, um, especially down here in Charm City and everything else. I know that other regions are trying to get tournaments going. I think it's tough for those outside of the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic region mm -hmm. to get a nine-man tournament going in the same sense because of just how far a lot of the territories are. We talk about St. Louis yeah. Yeah. being so far out to the West. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough. But they're coming here. I give Skinny credit. Love I will give Skinny a lot of credit. I give Skinny and Preston tons of credit. Like yeah, those guys okay. are willing to go anytime, any yeah. place, anywhere. Yeah, which is awesome. I think he said he's coming in Friday, heading up right to Boston for the day. Oh, that's gonna be yeah. great. Yeah. So, but so that's what we have coming up for events. So, I'm excited. Like the, this, yeah. we're we're in a good time for the sport. I think this fall has kind of been a bit of a downtime, but I think a lot of that is also just life catching up in a way that was lagging behind during COVID, and now a lot of stuff been happening with personal and private and like public side of yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, you tell, it's just on the grind at twenty four seven now. And I feel like that's kind of caused a bit of a slowdown with uh, a lot of the tournaments and league play as of late participation wise. The refs. Refs are tough. Refs are getting becoming one of the harder things to find. There's not just a shortage in flag, but yeah. high school sports is going. Yeah, I know. Yep. Yep. 
Definitely. We'll have some familiar faces up in Rhode Island for refs. So, which will be good. Good, good. But, so. Well, oh, one other thing. So, you know how, you know, Antoine posts those cards, those, those, um, things you pick the, the games, the NFL games every Sunday? Yes. So, do you know what Antoine did? What did he do? So, he gave me some money to play with on those cards. He said, Jamie, here you go. Here's some money. He goes, anything you win, I'll donate to Rhode Island tournament so you can give some extra prizes. So week one, two, three, I sucked. I couldn't pick anything. But then I hit him. So uh, Antoine is uh, donating money that's going to go to, um, I'm not going to say how yet, but it's going to go and be incorporated into the champions. So, but it's uh, over a thousand dollars. Hell yeah. Yeah. So I, I hit a card. I hit a five team, hit a five team. So I don't take any of the money. Don't want any of it. Um, but it works out well. So I'll be adding that. Not saying how I'm going to do it yet, but um, it's not part of my prize, but it will be good. I like that. And we, and we also have those nines made. You see the nines? Yeah, the uh, the ice nine. Blue one. Yeah. Or we'll call it the ocean nines. Ocean. Is that what the yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be ocean theme? Okay. I, I wanted to, I wasn't sure if I was ocean or ice theme at first because I saw the blue. Well, well, I'm gonna go with ocean, even though probably ice is probably more realistic. But it, it's uh but it was an ice theme, it was an ice nine. You so, can have uh, both come winter time in Rhode Island. Yeah. So we got those. I love having the different nines each time. So uh, we get some good ones, and uh, you'll see some more coming out too. So, I like that because we have the casino chip nine, we have the we have the weed nine, we have the tie dye nine, we have the gold nine, we have the metal nine, um, all these. So I actually want to create a shirt, all the cir- a circle with all the nines around. Oh, that'd be so. I buy, yeah. I buy that. I definitely yeah. buy that. I love yeah. the backpack too that came out. Yeah, that that was awesome. That thing is huge. Yeah, um, I, I, I just ordered one for my daughter. She wanted one too. She wants wolf on the back. So this is definitely. perfect. I love yeah. it. So, well, I got to run, buddy. I, I appreciate your time, and uh, hey, man, you want to make enough for me. So, thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, or gentlemen. Usually, your buddy's on here. Your buddy's not on today, Rob. Rob. He's uh, he's he's got dad duty tonight. He's busy. Okay. He's like your sidekick on the couch, you know? Oh, I know. It, it doesn't feel right. I'm just sitting Are you looking to the myself. side like he might be there next to you? There was like an episode I there was an episode I did where the Zoom backdrop I used was the couch. And I would just randomly talk off camera to like nobody responding like he was there. <laughs> what did Ross just say? He, I just saw you. He said, hey, Jamie Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on, Ross? I know, you know, you're probably in that room, kids in the corner. He, he really wanted to do this episode, too. Ah, uh, well, 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 we'll do another one. We'll get together before Florida, or maybe we'll find a time. Um, do like a, you should do a recap show in Florida, like each night. I want to. The problem I've had is like by the end of the night, I'm just so burned out that I can't yeah. push myself to like, yeah yeah like and it's, it's it sucks because last year i was trying to do shows while i was down there and every yeah. time i just didn't have the luck for it someone should i mean how cool would it be to a recap night i would work with them get the sports first each night this is where we stand these are the seatings here we See, are if we, had, going... if we had like a set at the field or something that if we could like like a setup they do for game day and all that where they're just sitting down yeah. by the desk and you see the field behind as a backdrop or something that would be sick Hey, like got, I, I got the golf like cart. I got the golf cart. Oh, yes, that is true. Yeah, we can do it uh, like on, you know, like uh, get one of those things on the, on that attached to it. But so, okay, I got to run, buddy. All right. Have a wonderful night. You too, Jamie. Take care. You as well, sir. Bye-bye. Good night. Jamie Wolf joining us. Glad to have you on.
All right, let's get back to the PowerPoint. If you're looking to join and talk about the Rhode Island Flag Bowl, feel free to hit the link in the comments. I'm gonna pin that on there. Let's go pull up uh, what I had. So that's the schedule, that was the schedule. It's a little different now. I don't have that on the PowerPoint. So we'll go over that tomorrow night. This is the prize that Jamie was talking about in the, the uh, earlier video. There's a nine man chain hanging off of there on the left side. I like it. Uh, he says it's ocean. I think it's ice. It just seems more icy to me than ocean. But why not both? It is Rhode Island. You are next to an ocean, you are an island, and it's going to be hella cold. 55 is going to be more like 35, I would wager. There's the two championship trophies. And then next to it, the flag, Shrooms, another classic flag by Shrooms. We got one back here, of course, said flag that they made last year. Rest in peace, Mr. Christopher Severino. Um, as Jamie mentioned, it'll be one year and about 13 days since Sev passed away last November. Um, it's crazy. Mm. Take a look at the TBT national rankings. Yeah, you got to download it or you got to download the app, Pig. That's how the Zoom one works. All right, so we're going to look at the rankings from the teams that are in this. Uh, debuting at the Rhode Island Flag Bowl will be Storm and Arkham's Finest. Jamie talked about Storm. They're from Albany. Arkham's Finest, they're coming down from Massachusetts. So you're going to see an uh, upper upstate New York team and a Massachusetts team in this. No information on them. We'll learn more about them, I guess, this weekend. See how they do. These are the teams that failed to make the minimum qualifications amongst the teams in this. Show me football is currently two and two in circuit play. They were in the Charm City Classic back in August, um, in fact. They had two games. They won their first game, and I cannot recall for the life of me who they beat anymore. Skinny, if you remember in the comments, let me know. I know they lost a riot squad, a really good game. Our own Tyler Spencer was there for that one. In fact, our own Tyler Spencer will be there this weekend for Show Me Football. Looking forward to seeing him and our bro Trey in action. Let's go get it, boys. TBT, Lou, shout out. See how Show Me Football does. If Show Me wins at least one tournament game on Sunday, they'll have enough to be on the eligible list for the next rankings. So we'll see what they can do this weekend coming up. We last saw them in Charm City, as we mentioned, two and two in Charm City. They got one win Saturday. Cannot recall who it was. They did lose, however, to Riot Squad. On Sunday, they beat the Rebels and then came out with a victory or a loss, rather, to AFN. See how Shummy does. I'm looking forward to seeing this team. Uh, they got Steel and Empire. This was XFFL teams. We're still sorting that one out, so I'm going to skip through it. We'll talk about that a little more in detail tomorrow. There's been some mess-ups on my end with uh, including the XFFL teams on here. That's purely just me being stupid and not realizing that they run Nine Man 2 up there. We'll explain a little more on that. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, missing the cut teams. The ones that will have the next receiving votes. I got them up there a little bit right now, mostly because they're going to have that shot this weekend to move into the rankings. Currently sitting at 26, the first team out is the Dragons, 12 and 11 out of the GCFFA. And then it's the Browns, 6 and 9 out of the GCFFA. Um, we'll be seeing the Browns for the first time this weekend since Atlantic City where they got to the quarterfinals, falling to Rampage on day two. Um, Long Island Demons, they're, they're sitting there at a third team out, seven and 12, six and five in tournament play out of the GCFFA. They have been playing with the Ducks as part of Panthers, but this one, they'll be separated from the Ducks. Maryland Venom as well from the LMFFL, they're making their way up there, 821 and one. They've played every tournament this year almost, except for York. Uh, they still got another one to go to in the Capital Classic. We're not done with Venom yet. Nomads, they've had a rough year, four and four. I've seen they had a good day one at AC. Rough day two, they were out in the quarterfinals to Empire. We talked about it with Charm City and the Nomads. Rough stretch there as well. Um, 
they just could not get numbers in Charm City. One and three on the weekend ended up being, or two and two rather, I should say. Actually, no, it was one and three. Um, the only win was against DX on Sunday. Took two losses to Rampage and another to the Baltimore Spartans. Um, Savages, I'm going to take them off of there because apparently it's a mix of them and the wild card team up there as well. So I'm not going to count that towards anything on terms of record for that squad in particular. Dirty Birds, three and seven. We've seen them a good bit this year at times, but this will be their first tournament since AC. New York Rebels out of the GCFFA, as mentioned, they're not doing playoffs. So this will be the last time we see the Rebels. So maybe Nationals, maybe period. We'll see. It's been a tough stretch for the Rebels so far. Steel, tough one for them. One and ten and one. Any win was in league play up in the Rhode Island Flag Football League. They're going to give it another shot this weekend. Last time I had a glimpse of Steel was back at AC. They rolled up to day two with only eight, and it was a tough one with the Dirty Birds. And then Rebellion, 0-9-1. They'll be making their circuit debut at this tournament as well. And joining us at this time is a Rhode Island flag football great, Mr. Pig Mead. Welcome to the show. What's going on, King? How you doing, sir? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Can you yes, sir. Me? How you been, bro? Yes, sir. I've been good. I've been good. How you been? I can't complain, man. Just getting off work, man. Yeah. How was it? Feeling good? Oh, yeah. Body's still sore, but, you know. Can't complain, man. Hey, you got to get it all. Got your body right for the weekend. Big one coming up. You and the Browns back onto the field. Um, talk about coming into this weekend. Uh, what brought this whole thing together with uh, you guys and the Browns? Uh, nothing brought us together. I mean, my, my background is the Steelers anyways. I'm from Connecticut, from Austin. So the Browns is the Steelers. You know, we just took that name one year for Swin's brother who passed away. Um, so it's just, you know, it's, it's family getting back together. That's all. You guys, this weekend, I believe you're going to end up, uh, you're in the, I think you got Maryland Venom out of, uh, OMFFL. They'll be coming up this weekend from Baltimore. That'd be one of your opponents. Last time we had a glimpse of seeing you got, uh, seeing the Browns was at AC. I'm not sure if you're with them or not at AC. I didn't get a chance to cover them at all, actually. Yeah, I was with them. Okay, so I know Ross had their game, had y'all's game with Rampage. I wasn't uh, able to see anything on the Browns that weekend. But from what I was hearing based on the results and what I was seeing in the bracket, quite a run in AC. This is a team to look out for, for sure. Albeit I haven't had a chance to see them since that tournament. But we'll get a good glimpse of them with Venom and the Long Island Demons. Your impression on the Maryland Venom? Have you had an opportunity to see uh, the Venom in action this year? Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't. I seen. I think it was an AC, right? They did play AC. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Bro, I seen them like a clip, clip glimpse. I was more uh, stoked on the the the, um, the jerseys, but I didn't see them play though. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, there's uh, yeah. they recently almost knocked off the Misfits actually in the OMFFL playoffs. So they are one of those teams you do not want to sleep on for sure. Yeah, but you know, I mean, come on, Joey, man. It's football, bro. That shit can happen with any team. I don't hey, care. I know. That's I what mean, I'm saying. I look, that's I, why I say I, you I, don't want to sleep on them, man. It can happen. Yeah, but I, that's for anybody, though. I mean, uh, if you look at it, the only teams, the only teams that, I mean, the Misfits is, 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 is huge right now, especially what they've been doing um, after – you know, uh, uh, entering the A bracket, you know, um, them, them, that's that's a core right there. But I mean, they almost lost to the Browns also in the AC. It, it, it was just, you know, uh, Misfits and um, the Browns in AC. What, what, Misfits? Yeah, they played the Browns. The purple? Isn't that, uh, was it, what me, uh, What's it doing, man? That's not the Misfits. You sure we didn't? They didn't put it on. Oh, no, no, no. What about what about New York? What about who? New York. What was the, um, was AC the last tournament? AC was, I think you were talking about the Titans. 
Is it the Titans? From, I think you all played the Titans. Titans. When, I think, you, yeah, they played, they were purple and white, the Titans do. Is it, is it the Titans? Nah, nah, we played this them too. This gets a bit an A bracket all year. Misfits got the linebacker. I swear, what's the linebacker name for the Misfits? He uh, begin with an R. Are, are you thinking of? I, I, think you're thinking, I swear you're thinking of Titans, man. I think you're thinking of Maryland Titans. Is it, uh, I don't know why I feel like it's, you got, well, it's, it's, it's an easy mistake. It's an easy mistake because they both have purple. They both that. have an M in their name. They're both from Baltimore. See, that's, that, that might be the fucked up thing right there. All of the same color, same name, all of Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's fucking me up, man. <laughs> Tell them to switch some colors up, man. They, they like purple or some shit. They, uh, well, what's funny is the Titans before wore the Maryland flag colors, uh, red, white, black, and yellow. Um, and then I guess they switched it up in recent years to the purple, and now they throw on a gold, and it's it's kind of all over the place. Um, it's kind of all over the place. As long as they got a team, man. Hey, it's all that matters. Go out there and field nine on the field. So you, uh, you making a trip? Working on it. I got to see how I feel to work on Friday. That's going to be the biggest thing. I gotta get all oh. these lines done. I gotta make the drive up there and everything after that. Get up here. I got some smoke for you, man. That's the best I could do for you. I've never had anything from Rhode Island before, so like I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I haven't even been to Rhode Island before. It's it's it ain't it ain't it ain't supposed to be as cold as like three, four years ago. But you can these tournaments up here, which is why I understand why you know the um teams from um, the south. And things of that nature don't come because it should be different up here sometimes, and, and it's it's cold, bro. I don't get us wrong; it, it gets cold down here. We used to have the old yeah, Hagerstown but... tournament years ago. Like, bro, I swear to you, I froze. Like, it took me two hours to warm up after I got inside. Bro, we buy this water. I'm telling you, Joey, this shit ain't right. When it get cold out here. You'll see dudes, like, dudes have been in their cars before the game. It ain't like, yo, I'm, I'm, uh, yo, I'm, I'm about to go to the car, bro. I'll see, just, just call me when it's time to come play. Like, that's it, it'd be cold out here. But th- uh, this week, it's supposed to be, like, 50-55. That's all right, if you ask me. 50-55 is nice. It could depend, though. If that wind picks up, that 55 turns into 35 quickly. That, yeah. <laughs> and out here, it might be, like, 30. If that shit start picking up. All I know is November tournaments in my history, and I've been to about four of them. And in the four of them, I've had freezing rain and sleet, straight up rain, snow, and rain in that order. <laughs> That's what you get. That is exactly what you get. Good atmosphere, but you about to get that death weather right there, bro. That's football that's weather, though. Weather. That's what we should all look, aspire for. This should be like the homecoming for all the teams up there. That's what this is. Like, well, see, that's why you got like the, the, the uh, you know, Rebellion, um, uh, still uh, the Wild Savage because it's in the backyard. You know what I mean? So for them, it's – and then like like the Rebellion, it only makes sense for them to do this tournament being that there's it's their first one. Like – I'm sorry, being that it's their first, uh, um, you know, actual tournament. Um, so it, it makes sense for those guys to be in there. And I'm gonna be honest, man, the records when 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 when, it, when Saturday come, if teams playing them, just look at the records and say, hey, you know what, bro, it's gonna be a cakewalk. It ain't gonna be that. It ain't gonna be that. I no, could, I could promise, I could promise any team. I don't give a fuck if any of them roll out in teams that say 09, 0, 0, and 15. It just played out like that. You know what I mean? We we get those football teams that they go through those those spurts, but for a team to just look at them or look at any team and say, "Hey, yo, uh, man, they in league record is 0 and 12." 
So when we see them in the tournament, we're going to smoke them. Don't come that. Don't come like that. <laughs> don't, 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 don't come like that. That's what I'm going to say. Especially on home turf, man. Especially on home That's turf. Or home turf. You, you'll be doing a motherfucker, another interview, but you'll be doing an upset interview. You'll be yeah, doing I'm an excited. upset motherfucker interview, bro. I'm excited. Like, this is, I, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to work my ass off to get up there this weekend. Like, I, I hope we can get up here, man. Like I said, you, you can get up here. I'll make sure I give you a right, little kid package for you, man. You know, uh, you, you, you definitely show love in all the other tournaments and shit and, and everything you do. So, this, only is, you come this up is actually, I, I, uh, I think this is the last nine man tournament outside of Albany that I haven't made yet. So, this would be it. Now you, I've, you, been you, to, you, you, I've been to AC, Nationals, Virginia Beach, Hagerstown, OC, DC, Baltimore, York. Well, well, I've not been to yet, but I really want to go up there. You come up there and somebody get you out to go to the, uh, to any one of these little spots, clubs, bars, whatever, I can promise you, you will enjoy yourself. And that promise is in all capitalized letters. Rhode Island is different. I can promise you this. It's the smallest state, but oh man, the love, they show love out here, man. They show love out here. I thought you will enjoy yourself, drive. shall we? Now, bro, trust me, you will enjoy yourself between just the people in general and, and then the outlaws. I mean, you know, just stay home. You know, uh, Rhode Island is outlaws. You will have a good time, bro. I'm gonna check it out. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push myself. Trust me, because I really want to make this happen. Like, life is never guaranteed after tomorrow, and like, That's with all the bad. fun that can be had, why not? So, what is it? What is it? A, a, a five, six hour ride for you? Seven. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's the stretch of it. Like I could, I could ride up because I got a couple of guys who are riding up. But the problem is, I have no way of knowing when we've done work because all it is is deadline project based. So like, once I'm done my last one, I can go. It's just gonna be by that point of the day. Am I gonna have the energy to just He's up and drive the no way back now? Yeah, or or we'll. I mean, but I have also <sighs> the beta coming up Saturday and just doing day two or something and just chilling Saturday evening. You come up here Saturday, you uh, it won't be a waste. I can, I can promise you this, man. Hey. Like I've been, I I I I, I've been there, I would say. Mm, 94% of the, you know, all tournaments. I've been doing this shit like 22, 20, 22 years. It's special out here, Rhode Island. It's special. I can believe it. And, like, 100%. And, like, you can ask them any, or ask them veteran gladiators, them veteran main event players. Ask, ask them, ask, you know, ask, boast it, man. It's, 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 it's a great atmosphere out here in, in, in small old Rhode Island. Like I've heard a lot of good stories over the years. Like I've heard, like that of all the tournaments that I've heard of, talked about the most with the highest praise. Rhode Island is always that one that I hear the most about. And I, I used to wonder when I was young and immature and knew nothing about the sport except for Hagerstown. And I look back at it and remember thinking Rhode Island in November, people go to that. And then thinking like. Huh. And now I'm wiser. I'm more mature. I understand the game. I've seen the culture and what you guys have up there in Rhode Island, the love of this sport that exists up there. Uh, I got a chance yeah, to meet yeah. the Rex Squad guys at Ocean City. And like yeah. the run that the, the two Rhode Island teams had in OC when they came down here, Brick Squad and Lions. Brick Squad getting to the semis, falling just short the buy yeah. Lions fall yep. short of the chip to Strong Island. The performance and the passion and the heart and love they have for this game up there in Rhode Island 
is immeasurable. And the culture up there, I can argue, is right up there just as good as Baltimore, St. Louis, D.C., New York, wherever you're from, and the love of the sport you have. Rhode Island is one of the more passionate players and teams you'll find in the country. Oh, that's, bro, big facts, man. That's 100% facts. It's just that dude's got to remember that Rhode Island is the smallest state in the U.S. So and it's crazy to think how many teams are in Rhode Island alone for being the smallest exactly. state in the U.S. Exactly. So you're not going to, and then you're not going to get like, you know, uh, uh, 10, 300 pound dudes out here. It, it, it just, you know, you, you're going to get dudes with heart, but the structure out here, you know what I mean? It's, and if you got them, they're not all on one team, which is why, for the most part, the uh, you know uh, uh, the rankings and shit be. I would say, uh, when you look at the A bracket, you look at the uh, just say the A bracket right now. Besides the Lions, um, anybody could be beat, and even for the Lions, the Lions have almost lost with Jeff Costa at the helm. To B bracket team, the teams that played in the B, and I'm talking about yeah. shit. The Lions lost. I mean, the Lions beat the Spartans, who went 0 seven and two by two points, and that was even uh, Jeff would tell you um, one of the uh, Spartans players just dropped the bomb. Hmm. So you know, um, anybody can be beat, man. And out here, it's it's like that, especially when you when you look at the uh, the A brackets, the teams that's in the A right now. That's just gonna be lit, bro. That's just gonna be lit. The uh, H the uh, A championship uh, the week after um flag ball. It's gonna be fucking lit. If you can make if you can make that one, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> I'll oh, make it worth man. your while. One day I'll make it worth your while. You know what? I'm gonna make a call, Joey, because I got some connects. I'm gonna make a call. I might say, yeah, I'm gonna see if you could. You ain't gotta worry about driving. Okay. I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I'm down to always make that trip. Get, get done. Get off, I'm gonna take my boy right now and see what's, what it's looking like. I just, just when when we done, text me uh the actual the city you in, so I can know the where the closest motherfucking um airport. And I'll let you know. I'm gonna already tell you it's BWI. BWI. I'm gonna write that down. City wise, I'm an hour away, so like no one will find me either way. <laughs> no, I'm gonna if if, if if it could pop off, I'm gonna get you out here for the championship week, bro. So you can see uh what well, um you know the eighteens in, in, in Rhode Island, man. And, and not even just that, Joey, the the, the sidelines, bro. Cause see, that's that's the thing that I, I think that a lot of people forget about and don't um praise too much is the the fans. You know what I mean? Bro, these sidelines, man, you know, dudes have games at 9 o'clock. Bro, they be out there at 12, still watching, you know, doing, showing, like, the love, the love is bananas, man. The love is fucking bananas out here. You get the OGs out here, you get the, the, the grilling, the foods out. Like, it's, bro, I'm going I'm to see if I can get you out here next week. Man, I would I'm love, about to really see that shit. I would 100% be down for that because, like, like I said, I'm I want to see the flag football world. I want to see the nine man nation. I love what you guys are doing up there in Rhode Island. Um, the league is taking off in a really big way this year. That turf facility looks sick. When I see that lot, when I see the video footage of everything you guys got going up there, that's awesome. Like top of the yeah, line. But that that ain't gonna. I, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I don't like turf. You're not a turf guy. No, turf is bad, it's, it's bad for your, 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 the tissues on your knees, man. That's so what I've heard, too. Make, I've heard a lot about yeah, that. Yeah, it, it just, it, it just makes you seem faster. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not a turf fan. We just happened to, <clears throat> because of the um the pandemic at the time, that was the only field that me and my partner could get. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was, it was only doing more like, you know, uh, um high school, high schools, and then they were catering to the Pop Warners and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm um um spring session crossing my fingers. I mean, atmosphere's still good, but it's gonna be on um the, the video footage is gonna be on some grass. You know. I need that I need I need that old school feeling, man. And a lot of the guys, a lot of us, a lot of the uh the older guys, the veterans, 
um, feel that same way. Even the young dudes who uh who know what the turf is doing to the to their knees, you know, uh, they not they not too fond of that. It just yeah. looked good. It just looks good you know, when, when you watching it. The shit look amazing. You see the you know the, the white painted lines, all that shit look amazing. But man, that's just taking years off your body. Yeah, that's always been a criticism of uh, turf fields and facilities going back to the original Astro turf. It's like it does take a toll on the body. It hits harder when you hit the ground. It looks like it's oh. soft, but it's a lot harder. And in the summertime, there is nowhere worse to be even on a turf field. Oh, you uh, what was that? Uh, what was that? V eight like four years ago, four or five years ago, one hundred and five. No, it might have it might have been like it might it might have been like six seven years ago in VA. Fucking, it was like uh ninety eight degrees, but on that field on the turf it felt it was literally one hundred and five. Like I, I literally think- almost died. I get I get well, after true. that. Like I I got very sick filming on a turf facility for OFFL last year, and it was on a 100 degree day, and it just hit so differently. The heat did when I walked. That shit hit different. That shit hit different, bro. Yeah, like don't get me wrong. I think turf is great if like you want to avoid rainouts or other. Because that that could be a problem at times, is you do get seasons where it's nothing but rain seemingly every weekend at the same exact time. Yeah, but the curse with that is, is you know, knock on wood and air, and you don't wish upon these things. But you, you're you're bound to get a a, a a a a faster injury. Yeah, because I agree. The with turf that. don't. There, there's no give back with the turf. You know, you you, you put them cleats down. You're going as far as that turf lets you go. You know, uh, that's why I don't, uh, me personally, I'm not, I don't do, like, indoor is fucking huge out here. Five man, uh, seven man, eight man, it's crazy out here. They have, like, one, two, about three to four uh, indoor facilities that that host um, football. I don't do none of that shit. Because I hate turf. Understandable. That's also understandable. Like the wear and tear, bro, just, especially. Definitely, bro. Well, yeah, man. I'm gonna um. I'm about to um. You said B what W? B S W? B W I. B W I. All right. Yeah. I'm about to um. I'm about to message my boy right now, and I'm gonna um. I'll message you uh directly and let you know uh if he can work it out for next week. All right, let me know, man. Uh, Till then, like, I'd love to be up there this weekend. I'll let you all know, probably right when I'm finished all my work and got everything ready to go on my end. I'd love to be up there, like I said. Like, I love this. This tournament sounds great. Uh, The talent alone. Rhode Island, I've never been to. Like, it'll be a first for me to be up in that state. Uh, The culture I'm hearing about right now in these interviews of both you and Jamie alone (laughs) entices me to want to be a part of it all up there. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, uh, you got Texas, you got Cali, uh, some parts of Florida. But when when you're talking about uh, diversity, all ethnicities is here. All of them. You know what I mean? I mean, all of them. And they, and, and, they, and they, uh, the love is, is, is all there, bro. Like I said, it's all there, man. And that's what so, I always uh, great. Yeah, man. So just, yeah, you let me. Text me. I don't don't even go. I mean, before you can go live and put it on the post, text me if you can. Uh, if you're gonna make it this week, because like I said, if you could. I'm, I'm a um, I'm gonna put a little package together for you. Like I'm a, uh, I'll make a uh, uh, one of my league sweaters. I'll make a uh, get you a league sweater, and I make sure I get you some Mary Jane for while you out here. All right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bro, I got you, bro. Trust. We good over here in Rhode Island. Good. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Nah, one hundred percent, bro. Wolf of vouch, wolf of vouch, man. Wolf will let you know, man. All wolf right, man. Definitely let you know, bro. So be safe, bro. Let me know, man. All right. All right, bro. All right. See you this weekend, Peg. All right. Man.
Uh, Big Mead joining the show. Glad to have him on. His Browns will play this weekend with the Long Island Demons and the Maryland Venom. Let's go ahead and click back on the PowerPoint, finishing this up. Once again, if you're looking to call in, go ahead and click the link in the comments. We got a little bit to go here. Let's go ahead. Look at the top 25. We're going to talk about only the teams in Rhode Island. Uh, Brick Squad there. We're in this one word. Brick Squad Nation 21st. 10-4-1. They'll be at the Rhode Island Flag Bowl this weekend. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Brick Squad does. They're going to be taking on the New York Rebels and Dirty Birds, two unranked teams to start the morning. Um Right now, they're 21st. They're doing well up in the Rhode Island Fly Football League, third place overall. Chance to win back-to-back -back trophies over the next two weeks. Let's see if they can do it and elevate their spot in the rankings. And we'll also discuss the remaining teams tomorrow night when we do our South show. Moving on now to other teams that are going to be there this weekend. Chang Gang at 20th. 11-6 GCFFA Spring B champion. They're the number five team right now in the GCFFA. They'll be making their circuit debut at the Rhode Island Flag Bowl this weekend. Jamie Wolf mentioning the dropout of the Rollers. We were looking forward to a potential matchup there between the Charm City champion and Chang Gang. Instead, Chang Gang will be taking on the 148 Outlaws as well as the Lions. So they're going to get their own tour of Rhode Island with the Outlaws and the Lions. Nice little back-to-back. -back. It's going to be that A bracket. You'll see they're very evenly matched. Two GCFFA teams, two Rhode Island flag football teams. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that bracket and is the winner of this tournament coming up this weekend in Rhode Island. Uh, takeover, as mentioned, they were one and one on the weekend. Got one on Empire. Lost one to the Punishers. Ryan Tapia mentioned that earlier tonight. Um, they're not going to be playing this weekend. I don't have any other results from the weekend for them, so they're going to stay at 19 for now. We're going to see some shuffling at the end of this weekend, some more over the next couple of weeks, a long ways to go before we reach nationals. Um, Long Island Reapers, they're going to be at the flag bowl. They're going to take on the Dragons in a GCFFA league game at 3.45 p.m. and then play Rebellion right afterwards. Um they're sitting in the moment number 18. It's going to be a crucial match with the Dragons, a team that's on the edge cusp of being ranked versus the Reapers team that's trying to hold on to their spot with takeover breathing down their neck. Of course, the 148 Outlaws, they'll be returning to the Rhode Island Flag Football. They're going to be playing against Chain Gang as well as the Punishers in a rematch of the semifinals, or sorry, quarterfinals, I should say. Uh, their matchup back in Atlantic City, where the Outlaws turned the ball over three pick sixes and a pick two by Matt Bailey, led to a total of 20 Punishers points in a 26 14 Punishers win. They're going to face off again this weekend. I'm interested to see how that matchup goes. Um, like I said, I want to skip over to South teams, go back up here, Empire number 15. So if you notice, I got 20 wins credited more to Empire. The reason for that is because I was not really looking at the XFFM, which is weird because I've been mentioning them as being part of that league for a while now and everything else. And yet I wasn't acknowledging the nine-man record on there because in my head, I didn't think of them as a nine-man league. My head thought of them as a seven-man. I did when I visited XFFL back in January which is unfortunately the only time I've actually had a chance to see anything from them. Um, but I went back and I added the 20 wins I've gotten from league play, um, including the ones, including the 13, I do believe from last fall or last spring and then the seven this year. So they're now 29 and seven on a year Atlantic city B champion, XMFL, New Jersey spring champion, XMFL league spring champion, they're going to be at the Flag Bowl. They're going to be taking on Arkham at 9.15 and then Show Me Football at noon. That'll be a good game, Empire and Show Me. Battle between St. Louis and New Jersey, XFFL versus St. Louis, Nine Man. Um, 
show me the only team from down south coming up for this tournament, or from aside from Venom. Um, those two teams be riding up for that. Going across now, Riot Squad, they're sitting at number 14 still. They'll be at the Flag Bowl. They'll be taking on the Wild Savages and Storm at 9.15 and 10.30. Last time we saw Riot Squad in a tournament was at Lydia's Legacy. They were to be champions, beating the Reapers. We'll see what Riot Squad has in store this time around. Also returning at the Rhode Island Flag Bowl will be the Ducks, 10-7-1 and one out of the GCFFA. The Ducks will be taking on the New York Rebels and the Dirty Birds. They've been playing with the Demons in the GCFFA as the Panthers, but those two splitting up for this event. So we'll see if that split remains the same the rest of the way, or perhaps we'll see the Panthers at some point down the line. This tournament, however, Ducks and Demons not together. They're apart. We'll see how they do. Moving along now to the other teams that are in that division. Lions at number five, they're 22, four and one on the year. They'll be at the flag bowl. They'll be taking on the chain gang and the punishers and what will be a rematch against the punish against Rob Lane. Uh, if you remember the championship game at Rhode Island, 2019, when Lane and the Blazers fell to the lions. And of course they'll be playing the punishers right after that five o'clock kickoff rematch of the GCFFA a semifinals back in the spring when the Punishers beat the Lions in controversial fashion. So they'll be facing off at the Flag Bowl, 5 o'clock p.m. kickoff. Punishers Lions should be a good one. Um, main event, Rollers and Bulldogs all on by once again. And, of course, the number one team I got in my rankings, the Punishers, 24-6 and six overall. GCFFA Spring A champions. Lydia's Legacy A champions. They're first place right now in the GCFFA. They'll be back at the Flag Bowl. They'll be taking on the 148 Outlaws and the Lions. Already gone over that matchup. Take a look at the regional rankings up north. About the same as last week. No change to it whatsoever. Punishers, of course, first place. And the Bulldogs, Rollers, main event. Lions, Ducks, Riot Squad, Empire, 148 Outlaws and the Reapers. We'll talk about the South a little bit some more tomorrow, skipping over that for now tonight. As I said, representative leagues from up north. GCFFA has six teams ranked right now. Rhode Island flag football with three, and the XFFL with one. Three independents in there as well mixed in. Most overall wins right now still in favor of the DMV teams. Rampage, Misfits, and Scorpions all above the 30s. Up North, Empire has the most wins out of any North team, or 29. Uh, then it's the Punishers of 23. It's actually the 24 now. And the Bulldogs, 22, tied with the Lions. And then from there, it's three teams down south with the Spartans, Titans, and right out to wrap it all up. And so that is it for tonight's episode. We're going to be back tomorrow night. We're going to be talking about everything happening down south with KFFL, Capital Classic. We'll have some talk about the Rhode Island Flag Bowl as well, some predictions from anybody who wants to come on. So tune in tomorrow night for another episode of Blunt Talk. Until then, I'm Joey Blaze. We'll see you back on the couch in the scratch. One more time, Ross Collins and I for a special episode of Blunt Talk as we take a look down south at what's going on in the DMV four state region. KFFL, another rain out. What's the ramifications of it? Is there more games this week? What's going to happen? Uh, Capital Classic, more teams signing up, looking very good. Could it be a one pool tournament? We'll see. Gonna be great. It's lit. It's legit. It's Champions Month. Welcome to Rhode Island Spartans to the same rankings with, with the Scorpions and Playmakers Elite. We still got Rhode Island Flag Bowl. We got RIFFA. We got KFFL. We got Capital Classic. We're not done yet. From now to Nationals, it's Blunt Talk. It's lit. It's legit. I'm Joey Blaze. Good night, everybody.